<laughs> well, the Sooners now go from playing UT to TU. That's right. After their comfort behind win over Tennessee that people are still talking about for good reason because it's one of the more rememberable um, and maybe the most improbable win that Oklahoma has had in quite a long time considering the circumstances that the game was uh, going down. Oklahoma now will face Tulsa and the Golden Hurricane, who will be a 30-point underdog, entering Norman. Sooners and Golden Hurricane renewing their robbery. It will be Saturday the 19th from Norman, 11 a.m. kickoff. Yes, it is going to be an early KO, and it will be broadcasted on Fox Sports 1. Again, Sooners 30-point favorite to dispose of Tulsa. Um, talking about um, what happened at the end of the OU Tennessee game, and again, uh, for the most part, this game was positive for the Crimson and Cream, but you hated to see both Hattari Bird and Eric Stryker displayed what they did at the end of the game. Basically, Stryker yelling at the crowd, the Tennessee faithful, you know, saying some things he shouldn't have said altogether, but especially uh, the magic four-letter words as well. And then toward the Tennessee recruits was basically yelling at them to come to Oklahoma. Stryker in that situation, there's no doubt him and Atari Bird, who gave the Tennessee crowd the bird, that's right, the uh, peace sign with the finger missing or the five-finger discount, as you might call it. Uh, both players got to control their emotions in a situation like that. Okay? Um, celebrate with your team, okay? Uh, don't voice uh, how you feel toward the crowd in that situation. It does really make you, but also the university, look like something that they're not, and that's classless, and you definitely... Uh, don't want to portray your university that way. It could have a negative effect on recruiting. It could be used against Oklahoma in recruiting. And bottom line, if you want to show emotion, show it the right way. Show it with your teammates. As Baker Mayfield put it earlier in the week when he was on the um, sports center with Scott Van Pelt. Um, but, you know, Stryker had one heck of a game, okay? And that's what should be the focus. And I'm sure Stryker and Bird are going to be running until the coaches get tired. Not until they get tired, but until the coaches get tired. As Bob Stoops uh, said on Monday's press conference, uh, the situation uh, will be dealt with internally. That sounds to me, um, according to common language, that they're not going to miss any games. But I'm sure they're going to be uh, running for a pretty long time or doing some sort of physical activity that will not be enjoyable. Um, talking about injuries for Oklahoma. And there are a couple to point out of significance. Rodney Anderson, the uh, running back, the freshman, uh, got injured on special teams. A um, leg injury, as Bob Stoops described it, a fracture in the non-weight-bearing bone. This means that Anderson's out for the year. Um, there's no good news about this, but if there is one little uh, thing of positiveness, this could be used as a medical redshirt year since the injury happened that early in the season. So... Um, a year of eligibility has been saved for Rodney Anderson, but again, just a horrible, horrible thing for him to go through, uh, missing out on the rest of the year and barely even getting to play uh, more than the game. Uh, Ty Darlington, we mentioned that offensive line injuries, I mentioned this during the Sooner uh, season preview a while back, this is the one area where they could ill afford any injuries and already once happened. Ty Darlington in the Tennessee victory, uh, suffering a knee sprain, it looks like he's going to be out um, at least a couple of weeks. So uh, Eric Wren, uh, redshirt sophomore, will be seeing some action. Uh, Wren, uh, I think, weighs anywhere from 30 to 35 pounds more than uh, Ty Darlington. But um, I cannot imagine Darlington playing uh, this week at all with that knee sprain. Uh, remember, the Sooners do not have a game after the, after the Tulsa game. So you get the bye week next week, and then Big 12 play gets cranking at home against the West Virginia team who um, will be better on defense. So, you know, Darlington's presence is going to be really needed for that game. Um, I know Tulsa's 2-0, but this is a matchup where you, you can't risk that, that knee spring getting worse. So i got to imagine that uh, you won't see Darlington um, this Saturday. Hopefully he'll be back in time for the West Virginia game come um, October the 3rd. Um, in terms of some other news to quickly talk about, Zach Sanchez, great news for him. Second time in his career that he's been announced the Big 12 um, Defensive Player of the Week. Six tackles, including a one for loss, and then the interception that clinched the game in double overtime. And again, commending the Oklahoma defense for a, a great game. Um, again, I still say their first quarter wasn't the best, uh, so I can't give them an overall great 
game, but it's because of their play, you know, from mid second quarter onward, including the overtimes that that allowed Oklahoma to come from behind and win, holding Tennessee's terrific offense to 254 total yards, including less than 100 yards in the second half, and that did include the two overtimes, by the way. So great job by the linebackers, and of course for Sanchez, the game clinching interception and the defensive line that got to Dobbs um, quite a bit in that second half. Um, now, one other thing, too, before we break down Oklahoma Tulsa, and we just found this out right before uh, broadcasting, as I'm uh, broadcasting this Tuesday, uh, September the 15th. And that is, um, Texas will have a new athletic director. The permanent athletic director has not been named yet, but Steve Patterson, who was athletic director uh, for UT for less than two years, fired. Um, so Mike Perrin is the interim AD. And for the Texas Longhorns, you might say, well, what, 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 what's, what's the big deal? Or if you're a college football fan in general, what's the big deal? It's the athletic director. It's not the head coach. Well, keep in mind that Patterson hired Charlie Strong um, to become head coach, you know, just less than two years ago. Uh, so if you're Strong, who has only won seven of his first 15 games, you wonder how much more time he's going to get. Now, as long as Texas has an interim athletic director, um, he's not going to lose his job. And I'm not saying that he gets fired immediately as soon as Texas finds Patterson's permanent successor. I am saying, though, that now the pressure for Strong uh, to get Texas going in the right direction, now it increases. And as we just found out, you know, Texas has very little patience at all when it comes to their athletic program uh, not being on a level that they see fit. And Patterson was only on the job 22 months. Remember, the guy before him, the Lost Doss, was athletic director at Texas for 32 years. Um, but for Patterson, I don't feel too sorry for the guy. He's going to get the rest of his contract. The, it's a buyout, a little over $5 million. It's what he's going to be collecting. Remember, he was under contract at Texas for about um, until the year 2019. For Charlie Strong, got to be a little bit nervous now because the guy that hired you is no longer the AD at uh, UT. Texas fans, I know, were extremely pissed. Uh, the season ticket holders were because the, um, the price for season tickets went up, I think, about 7%. Texas makes more money than anybody else. And maybe um, the UT faithful thought that Patterson um, was getting a little bit too um, money raising crazy for the program. Who knows? But um, he's now longer athletic director. That's big news for the Big 12. Now let's talk about the game itself. OU Tulsa, Golden Hurricane have won two games. Okay, they're 2 0. Might say, well, so. Remember, Tulsa only won two games all of last year 2 and 10. The year before, 3 and 9, under the direction of Bill Blankenship. Well, Blankenship was given the pink slip uh, you know, late last year, which paved the way for Philip Montgomery, who was at Baylor uh, for a while under uh, Art Bryles, and we saw how well Baylor's offense clicked uh, with Philip Montgomery. Now it's the spread offense, spread attack. It's a hurry-up type offense. And remember, too, you know, for Montgomery, it helps that you got guys last year for the Golden Hurricane uh, that are back. I mean, 10 guys on offense, ton of of players from last year's Golden Hurricane squad, including the quarterback, um, you know, Dane Evans, who's played two solid games so far. Now, last week, Tulsa went to New Mexico, tight ball game for about three quarters, and the Golden Hurricane uh, pulled away in that matchup. Um, but Evans was terrific through the air, and Tulsa had a pair of 100 yard rushers in the game, and Zach Langer, and also, too, in the form of uh, D'Angelo Brewer. So Tulsa, offensively, they appear to have improved. Defensively, um, as far as rush defense, they look terrible. Um, Florida Atlantic and New Mexico had lots of rushing success, and maybe this is just what the doctor ordered for the OU offense, especially the line opportunity uh, to get a ground game going, and maybe an opportunity for the Sooners. You're hoping that they can avoid the trifecta as far as bad starts in ball games and, and the offense. You know, the first two games has not started off on all cylinders. Maybe this is that chance to do that. Again, a, a Tulsa defense that even though past defense they, they've looked improved, really hard to say if it's really improved altogether because the first two opponents weren't very good, Florida Atlantic as well as the New Mexico Lobos. Um, but Tulsa offensively does appear with the experience they had back last year in this new offense implemented by Montgomery. They do appear uh, like they uh, could – have a little success in this ball game, but again, Tulsa has not faced a defense this quick. They haven't faced a defense this aggressive, or can rotate as many players as Oklahoma can. 
Remember, two of the games in Norman. And, and by the way, there are still tickets remaining for this game as of Tuesday the 15th as Tulsa returned. Um, I don't know how many, but they returned unclaimed tickets. So uh, you could still uh, buy tickets for those games as of Tuesday the 15th. Um, but for Tulsa, offensively, you know, they, they might have a little success. I just don't see them having widespread success. Once OU makes adjustments if necessary, I would see that – this is why OU is a 30-point favorite to overcome Tulsa. Um, so we'll, we'll see how the Sooners start this game. Remember, coming off an emotional win over over Tennessee, you know, you, you I, it's not that you worry about an emotional letdown. You just wonder um, how crisp OU will look early on. Um, I look for the Sooners to run the ball well, even though Tar Darlington probably won't play in this game. And I also look, too, uh, for the defense um, to get constant pressure on uh, the quarterback, Dane Evans. He, he may not have received a whole lot of pressure from New Mexico and Florida Atlantic in those first two games. I really think it's just a matter of, of the Sooners showing their, their superiority, you know, like last year when they went to Tulsa and put that game away early. Um, final thoughts on this game. I look for the Sooners to cover the spread. I look for it to be a 52-21 to 21 type game. Kind of like the matchup two years ago. That I think that was what the score was or pretty close to it. I could see Tulsa maybe getting a couple of touchdowns in this game because I do think, you know, there is some talent there for the Golden Hurricane on the offensive side. I just don't think defensively they're going to be able to contain Mayfield. I do think the Sooners will get a ground game going in this one, and I do suspect that the receivers will be balanced as well as far as who contributes as well. I look for the Sooners to get a lot of players in this game. Tulsa, you, know, you commend them for the 2-0 start, but they haven't played anybody like Oklahoma this year. Uh, the rivalry itself, Tulsa has only won once in this rivalry since it was renewed back in 1979. Their only win came in 1996, and that was during the dismal 1996 year known as the John Blake era. Um, no such thing will happen this week. And by the way, the 74 and 75 OU National Championship teams will be honored at halftime. Um, of Saturday's game. But look for the Sooners to rock and roll the 3-0. And, of course, the bye week coming at a real good time. Get uh, Darlington's uh, sore knee, uh, some much-needed rest. And then after Saturday, and what should be a convincing win, it will be a bye week and then Big 12 play against the Mountaineers at home come October 3rd. Sooners to win, and I think cover the spread. Thanks for watching. Boomer Sooner.